Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve sum of two integers. And finally, this is actually the last blind 75 question that we have to do on this channel. We've been tracking all the blind 75 problems on this spreadsheet. Link will be in the description if you want to take a look. I've actually finished all the questions, even a couple of them that are blank. I've recorded those and this sum of two integers is finally the last blind 75 question we have remaining. Okay, now let's get into the problem. So we're given two integers a and b, and we want to return the sum of these two integers. And the only catch is that we have to do this without using the plus and minus operators. And that's definitely going to make this tricky. And by the way, don't uh, pay attention to this uh, dislike up above. So I'm sure you know how addition works. We have one plus two and the output is gonna be three. So if we can't use plus and minus, we have to get creative. And by creative, we mean bit manipulation. So when we look at the integer one, it's gonna look like this in binary representation. The integer two is gonna look like this. So we know, of course, if we add these, right, we can do it digit by digit. This is gonna be one. This is also gonna be one. And this is the binary representation for three. So that works, but of course we have to do it without doing the plus operation. So we're gonna to have to do some kind of bit manipulation operation on each of these bits. So let's think about this. If we had a one and we had a zero, we know that adding these two together is gonna to give us a one in the output. But we can't use addition. What kind of operation, logical operation, could we do on these two bits to figure out that the answer is one? We know that this could be a zero and this could be a one, or this could be a zero and this could be a one, and adding these together still would be a one in the output. So if one of these digits is a one, we will have a one in the output. But what would happen if both of these digits were a one? Then we'd have a zero in the output and we'd have a one that's a carry value that we're gonna you know, shift left and then add that carry to the remaining digits. And by the way, we could also have two zeros, and of course zero added together would be zero. So what we really discovered is that if one of these is a one digit, only one of these is a one digit, then we'll have a one in the output. But if they're both ones, then we'll have a zero in the output. And if they're both zeros, then we'll also have a zero in the output. So what we have discovered is actually a logical operator called XOR or exclusive or, it basically means only one of these two digits is one, then you'll have a one in the output. If both of the digits are the same, then we'll have a zero in the output. And that's exactly what we need in this problem. So XOR works. If we have two ones here though, and we do the XOR operation, we're gonna get a zero in the output digit, which is exactly what we want. But we also want a one carry. How do we get that one carry? Well, you first have to ask yourself, in what case are we going to have a carry digit, right? When are we gonna have this carry? Well, if we have two zeros, we're definitely not gonna have a carry. If we have a single zero, then we're also not gonna have a carry. But if we have two ones, this is the only case that we're gonna have a carry. So how do we know if we have two ones? Well, we can use another logic operator called the AND operator. So if A and B are one, then we know we'll have a one carry. But that one carry is not gonna be added over here. That one carry is gonna be in the left spot. It's gonna be shifted to the left by one. So actually when we do this A and B operation, we want to take it and then shift it to the left by one and then take this this new integer that we've discovered, right? And then take that and then add it here. So we're actually gonna have a loop. We're gonna do an XOR operation. And then if we have a carry value, we're gonna actually take that new carry value and then add it again to whatever we have left remaining. Now let's try this idea that I just talked about on one of these examples. And what we're gonna figure out is actually when we're doing these logic operators, we don't have to do them one by one. We can do them on the entirety of A and B that we're given. 
Okay, so now let's take a look at an example. We want to add a, which is the integer 9 in binary representation. It looks like this, and we want to add b, which is 11, and this is what it looks like in binary representation. Well, we want to add them, but we know we can't use plus and minus, so what we're going to do is run the exclusive or operation, which in code, I think it looks like this. We want to run the exclusive or on these bit by bit, and we can do it on the entire integer a and b. If we exclusive or them together, uh, first this bit, well, they're both one, so that's gonna be a zero. In this case, one of them is a one, so we're gonna have a one in the output. In this case, they're both zero, we have a zero in the output. In this case, they're both one, we have a zero in the output. But what integer is this? This is just the integer two, but obviously nine plus 11 is not two. So we missed something. Basically, we didn't do the and, right? In this case, we're gonna have a carry one that's gonna be over here, right? And we're also gonna have a carry from these two, which is gonna be over here. So what we wanna do is take this new integer, which is gonna look like this, and then add that with the result of a uh, x or b. The XOR does add these numbers, it just doesn't take care of the carry. So we have to take care of the carry ourselves. And uh, when we basically take A logic and with B, we also wanna shift it to the left by one, and then we'll get some other integer. So by the way, over here, we're gonna take A and B and then shift it to the left by one. So uh, when we and these two together, we get A one. When we and these two together, we get a zero. When we and these two, we get a zero. When we and these two, we get a one. But we remember we wanna take this and shift it to the left by one. So what we're actually gonna have is a one here, zero, zero, one. Right, and then this will just this uh, place will just get filled with a zero. So now we want to take these two numbers and add them together. And when we say add them together, we're going to do the same exact operations we did here. So we're going to first XOR these, exclusive ORing these, we get a zero, exclusive ORing these, we get a zero, exclusive OR these, we get zero, again zero. Here though, we do get a one. So we got the exclusive or, now we wanna get the and of them shifted to the left by one. So and these two, nothing, and these two, we get a one, and of course we wanna shift it to the left by one, which means we'll have a one over here. So I'll just put that one over here because we know for the rest of these, uh, th this is not gonna be anded, and this is not gonna be anded, so this will basically be zero, zero, uh, everything is zero except this. So now we want to add these two together. Again, we're gonna do our XOR operation first, XORing these, these, nothing. Here we get a one, uh, nothing here. Here we get a one, and uh, when you and these two together, we just get a zero in the output, right? Logic anding these two will get us a zero, which basically means we don't have a carry in this case, which means we are finished adding them together, right? If we don't have a carry, that means we're done. So this is the result in that case. Now, what number is this? Well, it's 16 plus four, which is 20, which is exactly what we were looking for, right? Because we were adding nine plus 11. So I hope that this makes sense and I hope you kind of understand why it works. So now we can get into the code and actually what is gonna be the time complexity of this solution? Well, it's gonna be constant time because first we're, we're told that the integers A and B are gonna be between negative 1,000 and positive 1,000. And how many times could we actually do this loop, uh, you know, before getting a carry that's, you know, zero? It can't go run forever. Like, of course, if these were arbitrarily large integers, then in that case, we might have like a linear time algorithm. But for the most part, this is constant time. And one more thing I want to mention is how are we going to handle negative numbers? Well, negative numbers will actually handle themselves. And I don't want to go too in detail to that. We could talk about like two's complement and stuff like that. But what you need to know is this operation, um, XORing and ANDing them, this is equivalent to addition. And we know that in most languages, if you take negative three, you know, plus positive number, this will give us the correct output, which is positive one in this case. And since this is basically equivalent to addition, as long as the language we're using handles binary representation correctly, it should work for us. One thing I wanna mention is I'm actually gonna code this up in Java today, not Python, because Python integers are arbitrarily large. They're not 32-bit, so it kind of runs into problems with this algorithm. And just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna use Java. Okay, so now let's code it up. And yes, uh, believe it or not, I do know Java. I 
have coded Java even though I use Python pretty much exclusively on this channel. So now let's do our loop. And remember, the condition we're doing our loop is basically until the carry value ends up being zero. And B is what we're gonna use for the carry in this case. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So what we want to do is we want to assign A equal to A X or B, just like we kind of did in the drawing explanation. And we want to set B equal to A anded with B and then bit shifted to the left by one. And then we want to go to the next iteration of the loop, basically doing the same thing. And we learned that these two operations are equivalent to adding A and B together. But one little catch is that if we already assign A to the exclusive or, then when we try to assign B, we're using the new value of A when we actually want to use the old value of A. So before we uh, reassign A, I'm just gonna actually calculate a temporary integer, which is basically our AND condition, which is gonna be A and B uh, shifted to the left by one. And then instead, I'm gonna assign B equal to that temporary value to make sure that we use the original value of A, not the new value of A. And once we're done with that, eventually B will equal zero. B is the carry and then we can go ahead and return the result, which is gonna be stored in A. Okay, now let's run it to make sure that it works. And on the left, you can see that yes, it works and it is pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.